What's up everyone, my name is Tony Burke. I'm an AFF instructor and SNTA, as well as an FAA senior rigger. I've got about 1,600 or so skydives, plus a couple of world records. Today I wanna to talk to you about line twists, getting out of them, and sometimes some of the terrible advice that I see come up from time to time. So almost invariably when someone posts a video of a cutaway, specifically a cutaway that involves some type of line twist, people chime in with great job, which is good, uh, but every now and then someone comes up and says, you know, here's a video of how to get out of line twists better. Uh, pulling your risers together, pulling your risers apart, stuff like that. And I wanted to talk about taking that into context and sometimes talk about when that is good advice and talk about when that is terrible advice. Generally speaking, there are two different type of line twist situation that you might find yourself in at some point when you're skydiving. One is line twist and you're flying straight. When you first start out, you probably had quite a few of them. A lot of times they're related to bad body position. Maybe one hip is dipped below another hip or you're, or you're not flying the opening. You're doing asymmetric hip inputs as your canopy deploys. And that can cause line twists. And sometimes line twists just happen. Sometimes the D bag coming out of your pack will hit a corner and then just spin coming off your back. That certainly happened to me a few times. The other one is line twists when they're diving line twists and you're diving rapidly towards the ground. Typically your sight picture is you see all sky or you see all ground because you're on your back or you're on your stomach as the canopy is spinning towards the ground at a very unsafe speed. So any canopy can go into diving line twists at any time. Any canopy can have line twists. Doesn't matter how you got into these line twists. Let's talk about how you deal with these line twists. Like I said, there's two different types. There's a line twist when they're twisted up but the canopy is flying straight. And then there's line twists where your canopy is, is twisted up and it's diving rapidly towards the ground. Let's talk about the latter, talk about the diving line twists. Number one, know that you have a decision altitude. So the decision altitude, sometimes referred to as the hard deck, depending on where you learned, the decision altitude is the altitude that you decide that if I'm not sure that I can land this canopy safely, that is surety is now a no. If you're in line twists and you hit your decision altitude and you're still in line twists, then that canopy is not landable. It is now a malfunction. Don't delay, cut away. What is a decision? What is your decision altitude? The USPA SIM says for student jumpers and a licensed jumpers, it should be 2,500 feet. And for everyone else, it should be 1,800 feet. So B, C, and D licenses should be about 1,800 feet. The decision altitude really doesn't come into play when you have a diving line twist, and here's why. Let's say you're doing a standard jump and you're gonna deploy at about 3,000 feet, which is pretty common for most jumpers who have B, Cs, or D licenses. Maybe they open at 3,500. Um, if you're gonna deploy 3,000, that means you're waving off about 3,300 because it, it takes about uh, 300 feet for you to reach back and pull. So now you've initiated deployment at about 3,000 feet. Let's say your canopy takes about 700 feet to open. Some take a short amount of time, some take a longer amount of time. But let's say 700 feet. So you deploy to 3,000 feet, now you're at 2,300 feet and you've got line twists and they're diving towards the ground. You have 500 feet until you get to your decision altitude. Assuming you're diving towards the ground at about 50 miles an hour, and if you have a higher loaded canopy, that could be even faster. You only have about six or seven seconds to one, note your altitude and start troubleshooting those line twists kicking out of them, pulling the risers, whatever you saw on YouTube, and getting out of them completely and being able to do a canopy control check by the time you get to 1,800 feet, and that's assuming that you have a B, C, or D license. Probably not gonna happen. Probably, if you get out of those line twists, you're probably gonna be well below that decision altitude, and then maybe you've got another issue with your canopy. So you, let's say you, you kick out of your line twists or you put whatever trick that someone showed you on YouTube or whatever, and you get out of the line twist, great. Now you're at 1,300 feet, you pop your toggles and you realize you've got a tension or something else is going on and now you have the very uncomfortable position of having to cut away at 1300 feet or even below that not a position you want to be in so if you have diving line twists there's just not enough time to diagnose troubleshoot and kick out of those line twists so if you find yourself in diving line twists the only thing that I can possibly recommend is just to cut it away just immediately once you recognize that you're in a diving line twist cut it away the exception might be if you're doing a high pull, if you're deploying much higher than you normally do. So let's say you get out and do a hop and pop at 13,000 feet and you find yourself in spinning line twists. Yeah, you've actually got time to try to kick out of them to try to resolve it, but you're always keeping an eye on your decision altitude. Maybe you deploy at 5,000 feet or 6,000 feet because you want to get used to your canopy after a shorter free fall. 
again, you've got more time to deal with those diving line twists, but again, keep an eye on your decision altitude. But if you're doing your normal 3,500 foot or 3,000 foot deployment or whatever it is in, in meters, um, if you're in diving line twists, don't delay, just cut it away. So if you see someone post a, a video of them with spinning line twists and the cutaway, that's the right decision. Anyone who says, oh, you could have kicked out of it or you could have done this with the risers, whatever, they don't know what they're talking about. Maybe they were able to get out of it, but they probably weren't able to get out of it by a decent decision altitude, and they really shouldn't be encouraging other people to take such unwarranted, reckless risks. Even if it worked for them like 10 or 15 times in a row, how many times is it gonna to continue to work in the future? Maybe there's something else going on with Canopy, they don't know. All right, now, now let's talk about non-diving line twists. So you deploy at your normal altitude and your canopy spins up for whatever reason, it doesn't matter why, now you've got line twists. And you look up and you're like, uh, okay. If your canopy is flying straight, now you do have time to try to get out of those line twists. Now, you don't have a lot of time, but you have enough time that you can actually make a good effort. You can try to kick out of them. You can try one of the tricks that you see on YouTube or that people recommend, pulling the risers apart, pushing them together, whatever. Whatever you've seen described or shown in videos, that's okay to try it as long as you're keeping an eye on your decision altitude. Remember that your decision altitude is that altitude of, if I'm not out of these line twists, I'm cutting it away. If you look up and you see line twists so far up, you're like, there's no way I'm getting out of these in time, and you want to cut away at that point, no problem. You know, it's, it's your call, your judgment. But um, the reason why we have these decision altitudes is so that we don't have to like try to weigh the variables. It's like, no, it's my decision altitude, 1,800 feet. I'm not out of line twists, I'm cutting it away. So you do have time to work the problem, but keep in mind your decision altitude. Again, sometimes people call the decision altitude a hard deck. It doesn't really matter what you call it, just have it. When we're talking about these different methods that people recommend for getting out of line twists, pulling the risers apart, pushing them together, whatever these methods are, that's fine. The thing that I typically take issue with is a couple of things. And number one, people will sometimes talk about these methods as if they're surefire. They, you know, that would have gotten you out of these line twists. They don't know that. There's lots of different variables when it comes to line twists. There's wing loading, there's the line types could possibly even have an effect on your ability to get a line twist. Some line types just might be more prone to line to getting out of them quicker. Maybe not, I don't know. We haven't really tested it. it the wing loading, the wing type, the size of the canopy. There was someone I saw that said that they've had over 10,000 skydives and they, that they found that getting out of line twists in larger canopies is more difficult than getting out of line twists in smaller canopies. I've gotten out of line twists in large and small canopies. I don't know if I've, I've found that to be true, but I don't have enough data points to really conclusively say one or the other. What I'm saying is, is that there's a lot of variabilities in this. And just because someone used that method two, three, even 10 times, and their particular configuration of wing loading, canopy size, line types, all that, you know, whether or not Venus was in retrograde, you know, we don't know what affects getting out of line twist versus not. When people speak with a surety, that's when I really take note of, of saying, hey, you know what, that may or may not work. I mean, it might. It might be an effective method, but it also might not be. So keep that in mind if you're gonna try these new methods under line twist under a straight flying canopy. It's not a bad idea to keep trying until you reach your decision altitude. After your decision altitude or lower, then it's a bad idea to try to keep trying. And think about it, do you, you know, if you're trying this method, you've got line twists and you pass through, you pass through your decision altitude and then you decide you need to cut away at 1300 feet because you were trying a method that someone on YouTube told you was a good idea, probably not the smartest thing you could ever do. The other thing where I really, really take exception to is when people recommend these methods for people in diving line twists. If you're in diving line twist, like I said, you do not have a lot of time to get out of them before you reach your decision altitude. Just a couple of seconds, typically. And then you might have another problem with your canopy once you get out of those line twists, and then you might find yourself in a situation where you have to cut away at like 1,300 feet, 1,200 feet. Should your canopy, should your reserve get out in, in that amount of time? Probably, most likely, but you know, the higher you cut away, the better off you're gonna be. So that's why we have a decision altitude at 1,800 feet. So and the, people, and the, the people that are so sure about their methodology, even if they have some experience with that methodology, it's not been tested. There's really not enough data points to draw such a definitive conclusion. There have been many people throughout the years that have died under spinning malfunctions when their reserve was in their pack. That means that they've decided to try to work the problem all the way to the ground, or they cut away at 500 feet and their reserve did not have time to fully inflate and they passed away. 
So don't be one of those statistics. And anyone who's recommending to you that you risk having a fatality just to get out of line twist, well, they're an idiot. So uh, in conclusion, if you have line twist where you're flying straight and you want to try some of these methods that people have recommended, maybe they work great, maybe they don't. I can't really say for sure. There's not been a lot of testing in it. But if you want to try it until your decision altitude, go for it. If you're in diving line twists, do not let anyone convince you that it's a good idea to try to one of those methods to try to get out of it in diving line twists when you deploy at a normal altitude. Again, if you deploy really high, then you know diving line twists, you, you've got some time to work the problem. You don't have enough time to work the problem if you deploy at a normal altitude. Again, thanks for watching. Um, again, my name is Tony Burke. Thank you for watching.